morning and welcome to worship at St. John's on Sand Creek. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and we are a reconciling in Christ congregation, which means that we are intentionally welcoming to persons of all ages, races, genders, gender identifications, and sexual orientations. We also have a church dog, as I think you can probably see. Sit, good boy, Jack. And he always makes a cameo appearance at the beginning of worship because he's a beloved member. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with us, you may reach us by calling us at 518-465-7545, or you may contact me directly. I am Pastor Joe Page, and my email is joepage34, no I in page, joepage34 at yahoo.com. Sit. Good boy. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and we move ever closer to the celebration of the birth of Christ. And we are doing it in a new way this year, as we are doing with all kinds of things. Nevertheless, we hope that this will be a meaningful time for you, that you will use this time to stimulate your faith, have some thoughts about the coming of, of Christ, and to help us get prepared to do that, let us take some deep breaths and listen now to the music that our music director, Dan Foster, will bring us. the Holy Trinity, source, savior, and sustainer, the God of goodness and loving kindness, whose Son was sent to save us and whose Spirit, poured out, renews us. Amen. As people called out of darkness, let us confess our sins and seek mercy from the God of justice and righteousness. God of steadfastness and love, we confess that we love the works of darkness more than your light. We have sought to satisfy our deepest longings through material things of creation rather than through you, our creator. We are quick to judge others. We ignore the cries of the poor. We are apathetic when others do evil in your name. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine on us that we may be saved. Hear the glad tidings of God. The word was made flesh and lived among us. Clothed in our humanity, Jesus Christ lived among us in a community that was oppressed and impoverished. Jesus still calls us and claims us as beloved children of God. And in God's name, we are forgiven and restored to wholeness by the Holy Spirit 
and we are freed to serve God and neighbor without fear. And now the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Sovereign Christ, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the 61st chapter of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For the Lord has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its, shoot, its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsively Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for me. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke in the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words 
and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I have something interesting to say. Do you ever get confused during this pandemic, like about what day it is? So I want you to sort of check this out. While you're watching this at home, if you're watching it on Sunday morning, I am at Westminster Presbyterian Church where uh, Pastor Paul and Darhan worship, Presbyterian uh, Westminster Pres down in, in Albany. And I am there right now, and I am preaching on next week's text. And that's because I wanted to preach on the texts for four Advent during third Advent at Westminster Pres. And I was told by my friend and colleague, Heather, who is the pastor of Westminster Pres, who invited me to preach there, I was told that I could preach on those texts this Sunday. But that means I'm sort of morphing the sermons, right? You know, both sermons are about Mary, but they're about like different parts of Mary's experience. Now, my friend Heather, who is the pastor of Westminster Presbyterian, and many of you have met her before because she has actually preached at, at St. John's, she's been doing a Zoom worship for their services. And one of the things that she's been doing for the children's sermon is that she, she gives the children's sermon, but then John the Baptist keeps interrupting. He just like keeps interrupting the children's sermon and disrupting it and, you know, sort of barging in. And Heather knows that I think that Mary gets sh short shrift in the lectionary. So this week, she's going to have Mary interrupting. Um, John the Baptist will interrupt first, but then she's going to have Mary interrupt. And then after that, my sermon will be on Mary's song, the Magnificat. But here at St. John's, we're not there yet. We don't want to miss the backstory, which is what I just read to you. And we don't want to not make the connection between the promise that we get in Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. We don't want to miss that this response that Mary is going to have is about the promise that will be fulfilled. We need that backstory and not some generic we, but actually many of who are broken hearted, oppressed, captive, mourning, and faint of heart. That could be 
how we would describe ourselves some days. How are you sleeping, for example? What worries do you have? Is it hard for you these days to pray? Is it hard for you to find joy, hard for you to find God present with you? Well, yeah, I think that does describe some of our reality sometimes. Mary's song, which we're going to focus on next week, Mary's song should give us hope. There's every reason that it should give us hope. But just as the vaccines are not here yet, nor is there a reliable response to COVID-19, we are not yet there either in the Christmas story. We haven't yet gotten to Mary's song. We are in the hopeful stage, like in our psalm, right? This is one of my favorite psalms. Then, oh, let me find it. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. We're still in the hopeful stage, even if it does seem like a dream. And the story, the Christmas story, remains still a small and domestic story, the way we get it today. There's an angel who's come into the kitchen. There's a surprise pregnancy. There's the bizarre news of what that means, and also news of what the doctors call elderly prima god being elderly prima gravida pregnancy. So that would describe Elizabeth because she's older when she's having her first child. So she's getting pregnant way after the time when the odds of that are likely. And of course, the child that she bears will be that insistent, enduring, and interrupting John the Baptist who pops his head up every advent and yes, pun intended about the popping his head up, I know. And then, as Mary says, and as Mary says, and as Mary says to the angel in the kitchen, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Which is to say that she doesn't know anything about what comes next. But she does know this. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. <sighs> wow, she is crazy brave. How do we live into fearlessness in a time of fear? How do we learn from Mary? She wasn't foolhardy. She cared for her child. She trusted in providence. She relied on the promise. She leaned on the support of others, Joseph and Elizabeth. Maybe we can learn from that. Breathing hope through our masks, finding the promise of helpfulness and healing through clean hands and showing radical gratitude for the way we are interdependent upon one another. My friend's brilliant, brash John the Baptist gives way this week to Mary's singing. Listen, listen. Her song is full, so full of promise. And the birth that is its embodiment. As best as we can, let us listen for her song which we will hear in fullness next week. And as best as we can, do not be afraid. And in this, we ask for the aid, the enlightenment, and the comfort of the God of science and the God of wonder and the God who comes to us incarnated as one of us. Amen.
Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised King, your King yet every nation its tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before Him, their voices join your singing, Hosanna to the Lord, for He fulfills God's word. His is no earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And the prayers this week, the intercessions, are based upon the ancient church's so-called O antiphons because they all start with O and each O is followed by a different name for God. These are the O antiphons that are typically used in the second half of Advent, which we enter this Sunday. Let us pray. O oh God, you speak through the prophets. Your words hold us and challenge us and keep us right. Come and tell us the truths that we need to know and write them into our hearts and lives. O oh, lover of the little ones, their guardian and defender, come with your angels and cradle all your children and guide their stumbling feet along the homeward roads. O oh, maker of laughter, who plays with Leviathan in the deep waters, come stretch out your hands to cuddle and dance with all of your children through the moments of all our days. O oh, loving creator, source of how self-knowledge, how we know ourselves, source of all being, delight our senses, come and help and help us to see clearly the one in whose likeness we are made. O pilgrim God, abandoning that which is no longer needed, come with us on our journey. Show us how to travel lightly, keeping only what we need to grow. O God, you love us, come to us, come quickly. We need your help. O wind of God, you blow open our defenses and lay bare our fear. Come, breathe on us gently, as in the beginning, and give us life. O oh, day spring, be present with those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. And in your mercy, give us your peace. Amen. We pray as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the guarding of the God of life be on you the guarding of the loving Christ be on you, the guarding of the Holy Spirit be on you to aid and enfold you each day and each night of your lives. You shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace, and all the mountains and hills shall break into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The night is gone, the day is near. Go forth in love and peace. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.